All right, hey everyone, how's it going? Um, here to start talking about some of the topics that we want to cover in uh, Bio 101. Uh, this first topic may be surprising to you or might be something that you're not expecting, but uh, I like to start off by talking about the metric system, right? Which maybe doesn't get you excited, but I'm very passionate about the metric system and switching to the metric system. Well, it's a good thing to talk about first because we're going to use it all semester, so I want to make sure you understand it. Um, I think it's a, a good topic that, believe it or not, does affect each and every one of you, and it's important for you to know. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm passionate about this because I believe that it's a superior system to the one we use now. I always say that if I ever ran for office, you know, governor of Kentucky, mayor of Murray, whatever, I'm going to have one thing on my platform, and that's switching to the metric system. I don't care about anything else. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into any other problems. This is the one thing that I would run on. But I will also argue, and I'm going to try and argue in this lecture, that it's the one thing that we could do that would undoubtedly make this a better country and in the long run would, would be good for this country. So why do I believe that? Let's talk about it. So why use the metric or, you know, you call it the SI system. Um, I'll just refer to it to the, as the metric system. So I'm going to ask you, I'll give you five extra credit points. If right now you can tell me how many teaspoons are in a gallon without looking at your phone. Answer. You got the answer. You don't have the answer. You don't know that. I don't know that. Right. It's because our system is so crazy. Our system that uses teaspoons and gallons and converting between them is so crazy. And, you know, I don't have this memorized. And if you held a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you other than the fact that I looked it up before I gave this, I prepared this talk and it's 768 teaspoons in a gallon. So not only do I not know that, that's a crazy number. Like where, where does that even come from? But that's the system that we still use in the United States. And it's an inferior system to the metric system. So why don't we use the SI system? Why aren't we on the metric system? Well, we could have a long discussion about this, but I think there's, you know, several, there's never, you know, there's never every one reason. There's always multiple reasons, right? Well, a big one is, you know, cause America, right? We're Americans and we don't like other countries telling us what to do and they should follow us. That's not a good reason. You know, if there's a good idea out there, we should embrace it. And usually we do. As a country, that's one of the good things about this country is, you know, if we see somebody that's doing something better, you know, that's what capitalism does is we figure out, hey, they're doing something better. We should do that. We should take that idea. For some reason, we don't do that with the SI system. Um, you know, that's a philosophical reason. Um, of course, you know, all of us, we're adults, we haven't grown up with this system. And so it's learning something new, which people are often resistant to. But again, that's not a good reason. You know, I, I'm too lazy to learn something that's good for me. That's not a good reason. Um, but you know, practical reasons are something that, that you, you can't ignore, uh, that to switch to the metric system would require a lot of cost and a lot of effort and that's you know you can't deny that but i'm going to try to make the argument that it's worth the cost and it's worth the effort well why should we use the si system that's what i'm going to try and get into and you're probably familiar with it but i'm going to try and present some some you know arguments um for the metric system and against our system. Uh, so this is something I saw on, on Reddit. And this, is, I think, is probably pulled off of Twitter. But it just underscores my point, right? So, you know, this, this person is saying, Americans will measure with anything. We, we, will, we will do anything to not measure with the metric system. And you see the, the news article here, a sinkhole roughly the size of six to seven washing machines. Like, that's an that's a appropriate unit. But that underscores exactly my point, is that we are just so resistant to this and it, there's no reason to not use it. 
we're one of three countries that are still don't use the metric system, right? It's us, Liberia, and Burma. Now, there are other countries that sort of have a little bit of a hybrid, like in the UK and Canada, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll do miles per hour sometimes, and, and sometimes they'll tell you, you know, your weight in stone, but, but that's really phasing out, and their official majority use of every country in the world is the metric system, except us and these other two small countries. So, you know, that's got to tell you, that's got to tell you something, that's got to tell you that that maybe the rest of the world has figured something out. And it's, I think, significant that the rest of the world is on the metric system. Nobody is switching to our system. Nobody has decided, hey, this, you know, let's, let's use that system that they use in the U.S. That seems like a good idea. That also should tell you that the way we do it is not logical. Well, what are some arguments for it? You know, and... and, and Again, we could argue about this all day, it's fine. But one thing I would argue is that it's, on, on some level, it's more precise. You know, so you can measure a finer uh, uh, degree of measurement. And so that's always a good thing, to be more precise. And so a specific example I have is if you're measuring length, right? If you take a, a, a ruler, an English ruler, the smallest practical measurement on that ruler is a sixteenth of an inch. You know, you can find things that have a 32nd of an inch, but that's very rare. But most of the time, the smallest thing you can measure is a 16th of an inch. Whereas in the metric system, the smallest practical unit is the millimeter. And a millimeter is smaller than a 16th of an inch. And so that means you can measure things a little bit more precisely. That's important. The big reason is the metric system is much simpler than the... English system or the imperial system is another word for it, right? And in the long run, that's why it's better because it's simpler, it's easier to learn, it's easier to figure out, and you make fewer mistakes. So there's fewer units that you you know that you have fewer things you have to actually memorize. The conversions are very simple. So instead, you know, when you convert Oh, my first example, teaspoons to gallons, right? That's, that's a very complicated conversion, whereas you don't have that in the metric system. And um, something that I alluded to uh, with the, the first bullet, the metric system is decimal-based, not fraction-based. So a lot of things that we do in the imperial system can be decimal-based I'm trying to think of some though. You know, like engineers sometimes measure things and they'll they'll do feet in like, you know, 13.7 feet, but very few people do that. Most of us when we measure something it would be like 13 feet 6 and 3 quarter inches. Or if you are weighing something out, it would be 14 pounds 6 ounces, right? Or it would be um, uh, you know, a fourth of a cup. It's more fraction based. And we should know how to use fractions, that's not a problem, but decimals are easier. And when we're talking about a measuring system, something you use every day, easier is always better. You need to be able to do these things in your head um, very easily without making mistakes, and that's easier to do with a decimal-based system. So now, then another argument that I make, there are fewer units in the SI system. So again, there's less that you actually have to learn. So for length in our system, what you got feet and you got inches and you got yards and you've got miles. And you can convert between those, but the conversions are complicated and they're all a different unit. They're all a different thing. In the metric you got meter. That's it, right? And then you just talk about divisions of a meter. Talk about weight. We've got pounds, ounces, and tons. Those are all different things. And again, the conversion between one to the other is not consistent. In the metric, you've got grams. And that's it. And you just talk about divisions of a gram. So for volume, in our system, we've got cups, pints, and quarts, and gallons, and acre feet. Acre feet is like, we use that in limnology. It's an acre of water a foot deep. It's a crazy unit, teaspoons, tablespoons, and then, you know, having to convert between all of those. How do you do it? In metric, you got the liter. That's it. 
So that's what makes it a better system. And uh, in the SI system, the conversions are always the same. And so one liter is a thousand mils. One gram is a thousand milligrams. One meter is a thousand millimeters. It's the same, you know, no matter what type of unit. Whereas, you know, we have one gallon is 128 ounces. And nothing else. There's nothing else in our system where one equals 128, right? And uh, 12 inches is a foot, but 5,280 feet is a mile. And, and so on and so on. And I would also like to point out that, you know, you grew up, you're, you know, okay, we don't want to switch to the SI system because we all have to learn a new system, which I don't think is a good reason to not switch. But you could say, you know, oh, I grew up with the English system. I know the English system. You do and you don't, right? And so, yes, for certain things, you can easily estimate how tall you are or how much you weigh in English units. Those you use enough. But most conversions, you don't know. I bet none of you knew that 128 ounces was a gallon, or very, very few of you. You know, none of you knew how many teaspoons were in a gallon, or how many uh, uh, ounces are in a teaspoon, or I don't even know if you could do that, right? And so, yes, you know some of the things in our system, the simpler things you grew up with, and you can estimate them. Of course you can, because you grew up with them. But there's a lot about our system you don't know, and you'll never know unless you look it up. Um, Whereas in the metric system, you could know it all, right? And, you know, it's just a matter of if you grow up with it and, and you could learn it, right? What we need is we need a generation to grow up with the SI system. And, and then once that happens, that's it. You know, it's switched over. But that's why it's sort of up to us. You know, we're going to have to be the ones to make that switch. Um, again, just an example of working with English units. Uh, you know, the fraction-based aspect of it is a pain. So if you ever do any kind of construction, you're probably comfortable with this. And if you do a lot of construction, you can get good at doing these fractions. But again, fractions are harder to work with than decimals. And so say you got a wall that's 10 foot, 11 and 13, 16 in inches. And then you're going to put plywood. And you need to figure out how wide the total wall is going to be so you can put a strip of molding on there. And so, okay, i got to... Uh, two things that are an eighth inch thick, that's two eighths inches thick, so that's a quarter inch thick. So 10 foot, 11 and 13 sixteenths plus one fourth is, I gotta add four sixteenths, so that's 11 and 17 sixteenths, but 17 sixteenths means I've got an inch and a sixteenth, so that's 11 plus an inch and a sixteenth, that's 12 and a sixteenth, that actually is another foot, so it's actually 11 feet one sixteenth inch, I think? You see my point? Right? That's not easy to do. We did it in metric, say the wall's 2.65 meters wide and your plywood is 10 centimeters uh, wide. That would be wide plywood, but anyway. So how wide is the total thing going to be? Well, 10 times 2 is 20, plus 2.65 would be 2.67 meters. Like you could do that math so much easier because it's decimal based. And again, you make the argument, well, you know, I go to, I go to Lowe's and, and I buy everything two by fours, that's inches. And you know, but a two by four isn't a two by four, right? It's actually an inch and a half by three and a half inches. But don't get me started on that, right? There's, you know, I understand that, right? I understand that all these things have been set up with our system and would all have to be changed. But again, it's a one off cost. And if you think about the cost of switching, you also have to think about the hidden cost that we're paying every day because we have this inferior system. And so that's something else I'd like to point out, that, that there's costs that go on every day that you just, you pay but you don't acknowledge. So for example, the biggie is trade with other nations. All those other nations use the SI system. And we're, you know, trading with other nations is very important. That's a very big priority of ours. But if you're constantly trading with these other countries and you're having to switch between units and maybe you want something built in that country, but you want to use it in this country and we need it to be three eighths of an inch. And they're like, well, what's three eighths of an inch? We're in millimeters. And you have to make those conversions all the time. And if you're trying to 
figure out, you know, how much, uh, how much you're going to charge me per ton of wheat. I don't know. What's a ton of wheat? You know, uh, the other countries, it, it, it's, it's just going to, it, there's potential for error and there's lots of extra effort that doesn't need to be there. Trade would be so much smoother if we would just switch to the SI system. And there are lots of uh, big businesses that do a lot of, of uh, uh, trading around the world that are figuring this out. I, I bet, I promise you, this is one of those ideas that when big corporations start doing it, they're going to be like, oh my God, why didn't we do this a long time ago? We're saving so much money, right? So that's a cost we're paying right now. What I'm doing right now is a cost, right? I am taking time in this class to teach you the metric system and to talk about the metric system, right? This is a biology class. There's a thousand other things I could be talking about, but instead I'm talking about this. That's a cost. That's something I wouldn't have to do if we would just switch to the system and get with the program. Simple, practical things like double the tools, right? If any of you, if you work at all on anything, you've got a socket set, you've got metric sockets and you've got imperial sockets and you've got uh, uh, all these tools that have to be in a different size. And if you're working on something and you're like, why didn't my wrench fit? Oh, I got to go get a metric wrench, right? And everybody who owns a tool set has twice as many tools as they need, twice as many wrenches as they need anyway. That's a cost. The biggie, the, I think the probably, I would argue the biggest cost that we pay by having this hybrid, the, having these two systems that we have to work with is error. When you have to convert between metric and English, there, you know, anytime you do that kind of math, there's a chance for error. And if you have to convert among English units, there's a much greater chance of error because we have all these crazy conversions, 12 inches to a foot or whatever, right? 14 acres to a who, don't, who knows, to a hogshead or something. Um, and so converting within the system and between the systems, there's a lot more potential for error than if you just had the SI system. A couple of classic examples. There's a plane that flying between the United States and Canada. Flying over Canada, all the engines quit. Look down, out of gas. Luckily, there was an old Air Force base, pretty sure, and they were able to glide down and land it. And I don't think too many people got killed. Some people on, on the ground may have gotten killed. I, I don't know all the details, but why did they run out of gas? Because one person was figuring what they needed in liters and one person was figuring what they did in gallons and they got them mixed up and they didn't put enough gas in the plane. Another classic example, one of the Mars satellites. So before we sent the rover, before, you know, we've, we've sent several probes to Mars, but before you do that, you got to send satellites to orbit and collect a lot of data, right? So there was a Mars satellite got to be tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, what's it cost to, to prepare and build a satellite and send it to Mars? A lot, right? And years and tons of work. And so, you know, years to, you know, it's got to fly all the way out to Mars. And when you get to Mars, you got to fire the, ro the retro rockets to slow it down so that it can get captured by Mars's gravity and start orbiting, right? And so they send the command, fire the rockets, and the satellite disappears and it's gone and it burns up in the atmosphere. And so they figure out what happened, where do we screw up? And they realized that one person was doing calculations for how much thrust they needed in English units and everybody else was doing it in metric units and they got them messed up and they sent the wrong amount, the, the command for the wrong amount of thrust and it destroyed that whole satellite. Those are extreme examples, but there any time you have to convert between two different units or between units that don't have a logical conversion between them, you've got a chance for error and that's a cost. And that cost goes away if you go to one system like the metric system. This is something that floored me. So I was reading a book about um, the early days of the development of atomic energy and development of the atomic bomb and, and figuring all this sort of thing out and, and uh, you know, the University of Chicago is where um, I think they built the first reactor and in the book they had this, this is from the, the original uh, schematic 
for the first nuclear reactor. And so you've got to arrange the uranium and things in a particular order so that you can get the uh, chain reaction to start and control it or whatever. But look at this. This is the original schematic. But look, it's got measurements in feet and centimeters. I saw that and I about fell out of my chair, right? So they're messing with nuclear energy. And they've got like both these units and they're hopefully like converting properly between them. That's crazy. That's crazy and that's a cost. And so, you know, again, the counter argument is, oh my gosh, if we were to switch to the SI, it would be in a, a huge cost. All the road signs, everywhere, all the measurements, all the labels on all the food and everybody having to learn it. And it would just be such an incredible cost. I'm not arguing that, but it's a one-off cost. No one has ever switched to the metric system and then switched back. No one on the metric system is looking at our system and going, yeah, we should try that out, right? And so it's a one-off cost. And when you put it up against the cost we're already paying and then the cost that, we're, that we save in the future, you know, we come out ahead. And a one-off cost, when you come out ahead, that's an investment. That's not a cost. And so it would be an investment. So anyway, that's my argument. Now, we do use the metric system. And so if you do use it, then you get used to it and it's no big deal. And so I want you to think about some of the ways where you use the metric system. And it, you just kind of do it without thinking, right? I mean, if you buy, if I, you buy a, a clear plastic bottle of soda, how big is that? Two liters. You know what a two liter bottle of soda is, right? You shoot guns. You know, I've got a nine millimeter. Okay, well, that's metric, right? Um, if uh, you know, if you ever have a baby, uh, when you know you're you're getting ready to have the baby, they say, well, how much is the person? How much is the mother dilated? Well, that's measured in centimeters. And then when your baby's born, they got to take all the measurements to make sure it's healthy and measure the head in centimeters. And then they measure the weight in pounds and the length in inches and so it's again that crazy messed up thing but in general if you look at medicine in medicine they use the metric system right when you go to the pharmacist and they're making up your medicine they say how many milligrams of this drug should you take when they give you an IV drip they say how many or they give you a shot how many cc's should we give them cubic centimeters uh, when they're measuring blood gases, you know, it's a uh, milligrams per deciliter of blood or something like that. So if you pay attention, all the stuff in medicine is using the metric system. And what's that tell you? When it's life or death, when it's important, when you don't want to make mistakes, when you need to make conversions quickly in your head, people use the metric system. It's got to tell you something, right? Um, You know, and, and sure, I'm sure there's lots of other places where you where you use it. Like a one of my students was telling me, you know, they're on the track team, and oh yeah, you know, when we do track and field, it's 100 meter dash and whatever. Well, um, where you said, why do we do that? Because of the Olympics, right? Because every other country is doing the 100 meter dash, so we learn to get with the program. This is a quote that I found from another book I thought was interesting. Uh, the only Americans who've ever accepted the metric system are the dope dealers. Here are guys who probably couldn't get a D in grade school math and they're converting from grams to ounces to kilos at the bat of an eye. So there, again, drug dealers are using the metric system. Um, they have to make calculations and conversions quickly and they don't want to make a mistake. But also, where do they get their drugs from, right? From other countries most of the time. And so those other countries are selling things. So this goes to show you that, you know, trade with other countries. This is, this is, not, this is basically trade with other countries where you benefit by switching to the metric system. Okay. Well, that's my soapbox. That's my that's my platform that I'm running on. Why we should switch. Let's talk about how we're going to use the SI system and what I would like for you to know. Okay. So, like I said, each measurement has only one unit, um, and so whatever the quantity you're trying to measure, you only need to know one thing, and then you use some common prefixes to indicate divisions or multiplications of that one thing. And it's the same prefixes no matter what you're doing. And so again, there's less that you have to learn. 
And so kilo is a thousand, centi is one one hundredth, milli is one one thousandth. And there's lots more of these, but these are the most commonly used ones, and these are the ones that I would like for you to know. And so if you want to remember some of the, the common ones and remember them in order, King Henry died drinking chocolate milk in Minnesota, right? Kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano. Those are the common prefixes from large to small. And um, again, I really am only asking you to learn kilo, centi, and milli. Those are ones that are most commonly used. Um, we also use micro and nano quite a bit in the sciences. And so a thousand millimeters is a hundred centimeters is one meter is one one thousandth of a kilometer. And then if you're in a different measuring something different, a thousand mils is one liter is one one thousandth of a kiloliter. You see how it's the same, the prefixes mean the same thing. A thousand milligrams is one gram is one one thousandth of a kilogram. Um, so it's simpler and again it's it's decimal base and it's units of 10 it's easy to figure out so you don't have to memorize as much another advantage another thing about the metric system that I like is that it's based on simple physical relationships now the English system is certainly based upon such a thing right why do we call it a foot because of some king's foot was that size at one point right you can historically figure out you know why there's 128 ounces in a gallon. I'm sure that there's some reason for that, but it often is an an acronym. It's often like again like a king's foot, right? Or uh, you know why is body temperature 98.6 Fahrenheit? Well, uh, you know when they first were figuring out how to measure temperature, they probably said body temperature should be 100 or something like that. So you can come up with a a kind of a logical reason. Um, but they're more modern and they're more logical in the metric system. So for example, the meter is defined based upon the circumference of the earth. So we're taking something that's common to everyone and that's known and that we don't expect to change very much and use that to define a meter. That's better than defining it on, you know, English royalty. A cubic centimeter and so whenever you see a cc that's a cubic centimeter a cubic centimeter of water at four celsius weighs one gram and has a volume of one mil so you see we've got grams and mils and um, length all defined based on water of course water is a you know a very common thing that everyone has access to that's logical um, a liter is equal to a thousand cubic centimeters. Water boils at a hundred and freezes at zero. So again, using something simple and common like water to define these units. Now, <clears throat> talking about temperature, again, this is one of those things where you can easily estimate the temperature of things in Fahrenheit because you grew up with that. But, you know, we want to use Celsius. We want to switch between, you know, this is one of those things that I would like for you to know because um, you know, be able to switch between our system and the metric system. And here's the formula. Nine-fifths the Celsius temperature plus 32, that gives you the Fahrenheit temperature. How am I going to remember that? Now, plus, you know, if you remember that ice freezes at zero and you know that ice freezes at 32 Fahrenheit, you can always remember that 32. Um, you want, you'll notice that nine-fifths is very close to ten-fifths. Ten-fifths would be equal to two. And so if you want to estimate the Fahrenheit temperature from the Celsius temperature, multiply Celsius by two and add 32. That's pretty close. And so that's something else I'm going to ask you to do is to just be able to estimate certain things in the SI system um, to get, so you can get a feel for them, right? So talking about temperature, there's a little rhyme that you can use to help remember and estimate temperatures 30s warm 20s nice tens cold zeros ice right um, so you know uh, 30 is very warm outside body temperature human body temperature is 37 so that's another common temperature that you know you hear all the time especially if you work in medicine and so you know 
that uh, you know, your body temperature is very warm, so 37 is very warm. 20 is you know, about room temperature. Zero is ice, right? Zero is when water freezes. So again, some, some common estimations. About how long is a meter in English units? A meter is about a yard long, right? About how much does a kilogram weigh in English units? A kilogram is about two pounds. What's the approximate volume of a liter in English units? A liter is about a quart. So there are certain things that you're familiar with that you can kind of relate back to the metric system, and so you can use those to help you estimate things in the metric system. And so I'm not going to tell you the answers to these, but these are some of the kind of things I might ask you on a homework or an exam or a quiz or something to see how good you are at estimating. Like, what do you think I weigh in kilograms? Uh, something that's about, give me something that's about a meter long or a meter tall. Uh, what's a nickel weigh? Uh, this common bucket that you see everywhere. How many liters is that, right? It's a five gallon bucket, but how many liters is that? So estimate those, look those up. I'll probably ask you those in the future. But here's what I would, you know, I would like for you to know, right? Um, I want you to know the metric units for length, weight, and volume. So the meter, the gram, and the liter all the common metric prefixes, their relationship, and their symbols. And I mean just those three, milli, centi, kilo, right? And, and what does each of those represent? Those water to mass and volume relationships, so one cubic centimeter of water at four Celsius. It has to be at four Celsius. That's when water has its maximum density. A cubic centimeter of water at four Celsius weighs a gram and takes up a milliliter of volume. And finally, I'm going to ask you to, you know, estimate measurements in SI units, right? What would room temperature be in Celsius? About how many liters are in a typical glass, right? Like, so how many liters would this glass be? How tall are you in centimeters? Stuff like that. That's what I'd like for you to know. Okay, well, um, that's my... Uh, that's my soapbox tirade about switching to the metric system. Uh, I, I don't get fired up about much, but I get fired up about that. So please let me know if you've got any questions, and um, that's all I have. So I'll see you later.